Okay, so we have, we have uh, around 30 people connected to this event, uh, so let's start. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to this interesting webinar uh, focused on business opportunities in the agricultural machinery sector in Somalia, uh, a very interesting country. So let me first uh, uh, thank my, my colleagues in Mogadishu who selected the, the, the right counterpart to participate in this event. Five. Uh, uh, very interested companies involved in agriculture. Then uh, uh, let me thank uh, uh, Mr. Fabio Ricci from Federuna Coma, uh, the most important association in the agricultural machinery sector in Italy. Uh, they are organizing uh, AIMA exhibition. So uh, we are trying to, uh, to select also um, so many companies to take part in this ex exhibition. So uh, what we are doing this morning, uh, we will start with a presentation of the opportunities in Somalia. So we will talk about the business opportunities and the business environment in, uh, in Somalia. And then uh, we will give the floor to the companies because uh, this is not a uh, um, classic uh, webinar, but uh, it's above all a matchmaking event. So our aim is to connect people, connect companies from Somalia and Italy to develop partnerships. Partnerships in terms of trade, technology transfer, market access, because as you know, UNIDO is the only UN agency uh, with, uh, that will deal, deal with uh, industrial development and uh, uh, have relations with uh, the private sector, with companies. So our aim is to create partnerships among companies. We selected five companies to present this morning, uh, but obviously in Somalia we have a database with uh, around 100 companies. So uh, if you're interested in this country, we can uh, we can connect you with a lot of companies in, uh, in Somalia. Uh, after the event, uh, uh, we will organize uh, B2B meetings with, uh, with the Somali companies who, take, who took part in this event, but also with other companies interested. So uh, we are open to uh, all kinds of partnerships between you and uh, the, the Somali companies interested in developing partnership with Italy. I'm now uh, very, very glad to uh, give the floor to my friend, my colleague Igor in Mogadishu, who is UNIDO representative in Mogadishu, and uh, uh, also uh, officer in charge and uh, industrial development expert uh, um, in Somalia. So Igor, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Francesco, and uh, welcome for, to all the participants that I see uh, jumping into the uh, this uh, interesting webinar on business opportunity in agricultural sector, agro-industrial sector, in, agro technology sector in Somalia. Thank you also for Signor Fabrici, Signor Fabrici, for participating to this uh, event and to coordinate this event with Unido. It's uh, a pleasure also to have the opportunity to partner with Unacoma for uh, uh, the purpose of presenting the opportunity that Somalia has to offer in the agriculture and agro-technology sector in general. Um, particularly in the in the outlook of uh, upgrading the uh, technology, the agro technology mechanization industry and availability in the country overall. Um, Unido in Somalia is been present from since 2012. However, in 2019 we scale up uh, our intervention. Before we were more inter intervening in the area of humanitarian development, livelihood interventions. As of 2019, our intervention started to work more closely to the private sector, and in particular, intervening with the, the Somali Chamber of Commerce system, the Minister of Commerce and Industry at the federal and state level, to um, can contribute to the establishment of a better ecosystem for the development of uh, um, the SMEs in general, with a series of services that uh, are delivered to a network of enterprise development units embedded institutions that are embedded within the Somali Chamber of Commerce and Industry system that are designed and supported to deliver um, business services, business development services to Somali private sector in general. Among other services, uh, one that uh, uh, is uh, facilitate events like this one is the component of trade facilitation and technology transfer. Um, overall known as investment promotion, but to be very clearly define it uh, is the work that we are doing in facilitating business to business meeting like this one, or organize, supporting the organization of uh, business delegation that uh, 
travel to different trade exhibition over uh, globally. Of course, unfortunately, even though this activity was designed um, quite uh, uh, before COVID, now with COVID and travel restriction, this isn't being substituted by events like this one that, in a way or the other, actually help us uh, promote even more the opportunities that are in Somalia, uh, cutting down the logistical time required uh, on uh, travel arrangement and uh, probably bringing Somalia a little bit closer to the rest of the world. Um, this is something that uh, um, actually allowed to discover also man many opportunities that Somalia has to offer in the private sector, particularly uh, in the opportunities in terms of what technology are required uh, more specifically for the uh, that would match the need of uh, uh, Somali private sector overall. Um, I will not spend much time for the introduction. I'd like to acknowledge the participation of colleagues from uh, um, my team in Somalia, uh, Najma and Najib that are online, plus uh, um, a team of uh, other five people, four people sorry, that are dedicated to the project that are supporting the enterprise development units that themselves uh, have uh, a different, uh, uh, a large team of experts and counselors that are supporting directly the private sector in the country. Um, we are able to, as Ma Francesco has mentioned, to reach basically um, most of the private sector um, contacts in the country uh, is a project that uh, now is becoming, in a way, uh, the point of contact between uh, um, the UN, the international community in general, but uh, uh, able to connect directly to the private sector in a way that, uh, unfortunately, in Somalia has not been possible for a very long time. Um, we are regularly trying to collect more information about what is the situation of the private sector overall, the performance, the needs, the requirement. And fortunately, thanks also to the support of the government of Italy, uh, we will be able to do it for some time even longer than that, uh, at least uh, as of right now, we have uh, a burn rate, a capacity to continue this program intervention until the end of 2022. Uh, this is uh, um, also, the support can also facil is facilitating also not only technical assistance, but also financial assistance to the private sector in Somalia. We are in fact operating a credit facility that supports the Somali private sector accessing uh, enough uh, funding uh, in terms of loans from the um, from one bank in Somalia, IBS Bank, which is the international bank, is not st stand for International Bank of Somalia, that uh, uh, is able to provide loans up to hundred thousand dollar to the Somali private sector. Uh, within the scope of uh, uh, an available credit facility that UNIDO has established with IBS to uh, funding support from the government of Italy. Um, of course, this is a little bit of a pilot, I would admit, uh, from the UNIDO side. Uh, however, what uh, we are facilitating as UNIDO as well and the ADUs is the interaction with the other financial tools. And I'll mention this because I'm pretty sure that knowing the needs also the Italian private sector to engage with foreign companies is identifying enough source of funding for those projects. Uh, we also try to do our best to facilitate an engagement with uh, um, other financial instruments that are currently available in Somalia for Somali private sector as well. Um, but I can definitely uh, meet the requirement of uh, a project of this kind that we are discussing right now of uh, agro-technology transfer and so on. Um, I will stop here. I'm sure there will be a lot of questions at the end and I will give, give the floor back to my colleague, Francesco. Thank you, Francesco. Thank you, Igor. Thank you very much for this introduction. Uh, obviously, we are in Somalia since, I think, 2010, more or less. So we have a great experience in this country. So we are very, very glad to promote the country in Italy. We can also add that in Italy, uh, we have uh, um, leading, the leading producers of agricultural machineries. So uh, we have a lot of things to do, to, to, to tell to the, to the international community. So uh, we are very, very glad to do that. Now I'm glad to give the floor to uh, Mr. Fabio Ricci from Federula Coma. He will present the state of the art of agricultural machineries in Italy and also obviously the AIMA exhibition so uh, Fabio, uh, please, uh, you have the floor. 
Thanks, Francesco. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, thank, uh, I would like to thank uh, Francesco Pallock and Igor Scarcia uh, for involving Federuna Coma in this uh, webinar. And I'm very glad uh, to meet again our uh, Somali friends uh, I met some, one month ago uh, during a call for preparing this webinar. Uh, I will share my presentation. Oh, that everything is okay. Yes. Well, it's not easy to um, give an overview uh, of uh, the world of, uh, represented by Federer Nakoma, but I'll try to do my best in 15 minutes. Uh, um, who we are? Federer Nakoma was established in 1945 uh, and uh, is the Italian Federation of Agriculture Machinery Manufacturers. And we represent three different sectors. Uh, uh, agriculture machinery and uh, including tractors and uh, agricultural equipment, garden machinery, as well as uh, components for both sectors. Currently, we have uh, 310 companies, uh, accounting members of Federuna Coma, accounting for almost 80% of Italy based manufacturing facilities. Here you have a link uh, to uh, download the list of uh, our members. Uh, within Federal Coma, we have five associations. Uh, uh, represent, uh, the first one, Asomao, is representing all machinery and the implements uh, um, attached to a tractor to carry out different activities, starting from tilling up to harvesting, um, including as well machinery for livestock raising and uh, handling and transport, as well as uh, first processing after harvesting. And this uh, association will include as well the um, equipment for uh, irrigation. Asomaze is representing the self-propelled machinery other than tractors. Asotratori representing tractors, comma com components, uh, all components uh, apply to uh, agriculture, machinery, and garden equipment. And comma garden, the fifth association representing the manufacturers of garden machinery. Um, we represent an excellence of the made in Italy in the agribusiness sector. So um, we are an important actor in the chain approach in the agro industry um, because we represent all technologies uh, used in the field for uh, uh, crop production. And then in Italy, we have also two other different associations representing technologies and machinery for processing and packaging agriculture products. So we are in the position to offer a whole range of technologies for the agribusiness sector. This is a very, uh, this is a snapshot about uh, the turnover of the Italian agriculture machine industry uh, in 2019. We are still waiting for the final data for 2020. In any case, uh, uh, it was 11.4 billion, 65% uh, exported to more than 180 countries. We are uh, definitely third uh, ranking in the world for turnover and first in terms of uh, product range offered by our companies. Um, there are almost 2,000 uh, uh, companies. We have almost 2,000 companies in Italy. Uh, this is uh, uh, the share for the, of, of the turnover for different sectors, just, uh, mm, just as, a, uh, as a remind, and um, I will skip this slide. Uh, as I said before, we export to more than 180 countries. Uh, the European Union and other European countries uh, still represent uh, the main uh, uh, share of our exports, uh, almost uh, 70 percent. Uh, Africa uh, represents only 4.6 percent of our exports, uh, and as we know, Africa is uh, still a, a, a challenge and opportunity because it's a home to 60 percent of the worst unexploited arable land, according to the FAO statistics, and is still facing this challenge as the agriculture machine use is almost negligible compared to other regional areas. Um, as a, um, um, 
the our uh, uh, agricultural machinery industry reflects the uh, Italian uh, industry network. What does it mean? Uh, our main com our companies are basically main uh, made up of a small and medium enterprises, uh, so they are uh, flexible and capable to adapt their production to the different local uh, regional agriculture needs. Um, our industry is uh, much more focused on uh, uh, small and medium mechanization suitable for horticulture and high value crops. Uh, they are so called cash crops like fruits and vegetables. And um, compared to our main um, competitors, uh, which are uh, US and Germany, um, we offer the widest range of agricultural machinery and equipment uh, um, as well as components. And the difference is that we are, as I said before, um, much more um, addressed to small and medium mechanization, whereas uh, US and Germany uh, produce machinery for extensive crops, mainly. Um, here, I just listed the benefits of agricultural mechanization. We have a, a lot of benefits by introducing and enhancing the level of uh, agricultural mechanization in the country, in, a, in farming, and from a, a social, economic, uh, and a sustainable point of view. Of course, we improve the efficiency in the use of agricultural inputs in terms of uh, uh, by reducing uh, the, um, the quantity of seeds, fertilizer, and chemicals. And this means that also we reduce the cost production of farmers and we increase farmers' income. Uh, we enhance the, we increase the productivity in the area and the quality of products. As well, we uh, raise the efficiency of labor and enhances the farm production per worker. From a so social uh, point of view, we, uh, the agricultural mechanization introduces progress, progress and prosperity in the rural areas and enhance living standards of farmers. And from a sustainable point of view, uh, by introducing mechanization, uh, uh, matching the um, use of agricultural machinery with the agronomic uh, techniques, uh, we preserve soil erosion and help in conserving natural resources, like, for example, water in the sphere of irrigation. And that is also a, a wonderful tool for, um, for shifting from subsistence farming to commercial agriculture. Um, I believe that uh, the Italian industry is the right partner uh, for Somalia because we are, as uh, said, uh, Francesco said before, leaders in a small and medium sized machinery and the implements for small scale farmers. Because we're leading uh, industry in uh, producing manufacturing working tractors, for example, handheld portable equipment and uh, low power compact tractors. This is only uh, some uh, uh, samples. Um, we tailor made uh, uh, technologies for the benefits of the local agricultures in terms of uh, uh, soil conditions and crops varieties. And uh, um, as I said before, uh, we export to more than 100 countries. So this means that uh, the innovation, the quality, the reliability and durability of our technologies and machinery are really appreciated by customers uh, all over the world. And uh, last but not least, uh, our industry provides uh, education and training for farmers and technicians to effectively and properly operate and maintain equipment. And this is a very important asset, uh, um, especially in the developing countries. Uh, the following three slides, I just uh, um, um, in included some uh, uh, known exhaustive uh, examples of uh, mechanization uh, solutions for horticulture, so for the vegetable productions, uh, started from tractors, uh, agriculture uh, implements and machinery for land preparation, uh, sowing, fertilizing, crop protection, up to harvesting, but including as well irrigation equipment and walking tractor. This is a very versatile machinery, 
quite simple, but you can uh, uh, attach a lot of uh, equipment to carry out different uh, activities in the field, especially in a small uh, uh, plots uh, uh, for, uh, for farming. And Italy is a, really a leader um, in the world for producing working tractors, especially, and as well as uh, specialized and compact tractors. Uh, this one is uh, reflecting some solutions for fruit growing. Uh, we are the only country making uh, tractors for orchards and vineyards in the world, uh, as we are the land for producing uh, uh, wine and uh, uh, all kinds of fruits, uh, um, including as well as some equipment for ground care maintenance, crop protection, uh, so like sprayers, and uh, air blast sprayers or uh, uh, boom sprayers, uh, machinery for mechanical weeding, uh, tree irrigation used in the uh, fruit growing, some uh, electrical uh, equipment to transport the beans, as well as including handheld equipment for spraying and brewing in the orchards. I've not included other uh, technologies uh, like the mobile elevating platforms used for orchards, uh, but uh, this is, uh, as, as I said before, uh, very few examples uh, in the uh, huge world of mechanization. Um, the, third, the third slide is, reflect, is referring to cereals. Uh, um, I just uh, uh, take, uh, took a look uh, at the crop production uh, of the four um, regions uh, um, in Somalia, where the UNIDO has uh, uh, involved this in this project. And so here we have the whole chain starting from tractors for open fields, uh, equipment for land preparation, so working, um, seeders uh, carrying out at the same time uh, uh, fertilizing activities, uh, crop protection, uh, harvesting, you can see it combines, irrigation equipment uh, and uh, equipment for handling and transport, uh, for example, greens uh, like uh, trailers. As Francesco said before, Federnacoma is the organizer of the second largest uh, trade show for agricultural mechanization in the world and the first one for a small medium mechanization. It's called AIMA. Uh, is International Agriculture and Garden Machine Exhibition. Due to the pandemic, uh, we uh, postponed the 2020 edition previously scheduled in November to uh, 19, 23rd October of this year. Uh, this show is organized by uh, Federal Commerce since 1969. So this year, the 44th edition of EMA will be held in October. And um, as uh, I said before, we are ranking in second uh, in Europe, Europe among over 200 sectorial exhibitions. And these are some facts and figures related to the last edition um, held in 2018. In terms of uh, exhibitors, we reached uh, more or less 1,960 exhibitors uh, from almost uh, 47 countries. And uh, we reached uh, the uh, record number of visitors uh, the overall was uh, 320,000 visitors, uh, who's uh, 51,000 coming from abroad, uh, specifically from 185 countries. And they took in AMA 2018, Hello? We, we recorded uh, two visitors from Somalia. So with the share of uh, the 51,000 foreign visitors uh, re registered in uh, AMA 2018, the majority is coming from Europe. And one of the assets of AIM International is that we split up in uh, all the exhibiting area into 14 product sectors. So if you're looking for some specific machinery, you don't need to uh, visit all around the show because we have some specific pavilions addressed for each uh, specific sectors. 
So we hope that uh, um, this year will, uh, uh, in cooperation with the UNIDO, um, will host a delegation from Somali in order, Somalia in order to visit the show, uh, to do, uh, take a look at the latest technologies um, and also meet Italian companies in order to discuss and to um, find out the most appropriate solution for the Somali agriculture. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks. Thank you, thank you Fabio. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully uh, we, we would like to come. So uh, we are evaluating the participation of Somali companies. Obviously we will hope to, uh, to take part in this interesting exhibition. Now, uh, let's go to the field. So uh, let's go to, to Somalia to, to better know uh, the, the Somali needs in terms of machinery, the existing opportunities in the agriculture uh, Somali sector. So uh, let me give the floor to my, to my colleagues in Mogadishu, starting from uh, uh, Najib, uh, the local coordinator of UNIDO in Mogadishu, and then to Najma, uh, the, the national uh, coordinator um, in the Mogadishu EDU. So, uh, Najib, you have the floor, please. Yes, um, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, um, my colleague Igor Scarcia. Good afternoon, Francesco and Fabio Ricci from, uh, from Federal Um I would like to welcome everyone, um, including Somali delegations. Um, Somalia in recent years, as you know, um, has gained a positive momentum towards uh, economic development. As per the World Bank report, the GDP of the country is growing as uh, in a steady uh, rate since 2013. Um, the exports that goes from Somalia is highly agricultural orientated uh, with 93% of its share is from agriculture of which um, livestock uh, represents 50% of the total. Um, to further develop um, these sectors, uh, we, we, the Somalis, uh, they, especially farmers and those in the livestock sector, they require new technologies and expertise uh, to, to create economic development, but also to catch up with the neighboring countries such as uh, Kenya and, and Ethiopia, and also the rest of the, of, 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 of the world. Um, the technology is important because um, um, to as Somalis are, are now nowadays striving to export more and instead of just importing, um, it, it will give them a, a bit of um, um, uh, advantage if they have a new expertise gained and, and, and technologies. Um, so therefore, um, I will upload and comment uh, Federagna Coma and, uh, and Mr. Fabio Ricci for, 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 for um, being in this effort and also for believing in Somalia and, and trying to address and adapt to the needs of the Somali delegation. Um, I believe and I'm confident that Federal Nakoma in, in, in the coming years will be leading in the, in the Somali market because um, early involvement is always an advantage and, and that's all, always uh, has been proven not only in Somalia and other countries as well. Uh, I would also like to thank ITPO, especially um, my colleague Francesco, for, for making such um, technical meetings possible. And also, finally, I would like to thank the Somali delegation for presenting their needs and, and demands openly. And, um, and, and also, lastly, I would like to thank my colleagues um, Najma and Salat and Hussein and, and Ahmed from, from the field who are always working tirely to, to gain more information on the market. Uh, information is always key. If you have the right information, then you can respond. And I believe also that is also why I believe um, Federal Nakoma will be leading in the coming years. Um, I thank you all and, and welcome to this technical meeting. Thank you again. Thank you, Najib. Thank you very much. So Najma. Please, it's your turn.
Najma, you are mute. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear nothing. I'm having network issues. Um, if I can give you a little bit of background on the agricultural um, component in Somalia. Agriculture is a major component uh, uh, and also one of the largest sectors in Somalia. It generates more than 70% of the national gross domestic product from exports to domestic uh, distribution. Uh, <clears throat> the Somali agricultural production is mainly uh, on, based on traditional farming. And uh, now that Somalia is coming out from the civil war and other um, from the civil war, the companies who are dealing in the agriculture sector are looking for uh, modern technologies. Uh, the main, right now they mainly rely on equipments uh, such as hand hone and other manual tools. Uh, the tools are used to pay the land. Uh, for, um, one of the main, uh, when we spoke to companies in Somalia, one of the main things that they always discuss irrigation system. Uh, these are from spray guns to, uh, from drip irrigation or even a pivot system. Uh, most, uh, the country relies, uh, mainly engages in uh, rain fed or dry land farming from the waters of Shabel or Juba River as a main source of irrigation. So that to have a proper irrigation system or in Somalia would be a great advantage to these companies. They also uh, talked about harvesting machineries, tractors, uh, planter and seeds, hoeing machines, um, manual farming tools such as baler, husks, shovels, rakes, um, and also uh, normal manual uh, machines like wall burrows, machetes, uh, uh, forks, uh, and so on. Um, in order to address one of the main issues in Somalia, uh, we need to look at uh, irrigation systems uh, to, in order to get the, in order to connect the river to the farmers. Um, we, I'm very grateful to this event uh, so that the companies can actually tell you from their own voice what exactly that they need so that uh, you can form a partnership with them and then they can uh, hopefully purchase what they need. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, thank you very much, Najma. So before giving the floor to the Somali companies, uh, let me tell you that you can pose your questions in the question, question and answer uh, section in the, in the toolbar of, uh, of this webinar. So at the end of the presentation, we can, uh, we can reply to, uh, to all your questions. So let's start with the, uh, the presentation of the companies. Uh, a lot of, of things to, uh, to give to you. So uh, let me first uh, give the floor to uh, Madame Najma Jailani from Some Fresh, who will introduce uh, uh, her company. Najma, uh, you, have, you have the floor. You are muted. If you can switch on your uh, microphone, okay. okay. Hello. Um, thank you very much for having me. And this is a very important discussion. Um, I'm representing uh, some fresh fruits uh, company. Uh, it's located in Somalia. Um, it, it was created in uh, 2013, beginning of 2014, uh, by a woman named Hersia. Um, it was a small business that started in, at her house. And uh, now it expanded to uh, the Somali uh, companies, I mean, the Somali market here in Somalia, in Mogadishu especially. Um, if we can go to the, the content, I will let you know uh, what I'll be covering here today. Uh, some of the stuff that I'll be talking about is, uh, what's the yellow banana? and uh, how is it in the Somali market. Uh, some of the um, organization uh, farmers that we uh, work with here in, in Somalia and what is the future for the company. Also, um, 
uh, some of the challenges we face and some of the uh, investment opportunities that um, that we are interested in. Okay, um, so uh, the the market here uh, for the yellow banana is very much uh, popular here in Somalia. Uh, after the Civil War, uh, the yellow banana disappeared from from the uh, market as we know of, and Sunfresh is the only company that does the um, yellow banana right now in uh, Somalia. Um, we distribute the yellow banana here in the local market in Mogadishu, including uh, uh, some of the, um, you know, uh, local hotels, um, some of the markets. Uh, Some fresh was able to create a lot of jobs of uh, women that sell uh, fruits and vegetables here in Somalia, and was able to. Uh, distribute their banana and they were able to also make money on, on, on top by basically distributing the banana they get from us to the local market. Uh, uh, with the support of Gail, uh, we established um, a cold storage room to enhance the quality of the banana. Uh, we also uh, we also have uh, a lot of uh, employees that work with us for the company, uh, about 32 uh, full-time employees, as well as you know, over 30 uh, employees that work occasionally when there's more work to be done. Uh, Stonefresh was also able to buy their own farm and um, also uh, basically before we outsource other farmers, but right now we have our own farm, which makes it a lot much better to control the quality of the of the farms. Uh, some of the technical training that uh, Somfresh was able to do was establish the Somali Panana Technical Institute. Uh, if we can get to the uh, next slide. Uh, uh, the, the Somali Banana Technical Institute provides technical support to some of the farmers and association right here in Mogadishu as well as the surrounding area of Mogadishu. Uh, it gave, uh, it was able to award a training certificate to over 219 students since January of this year and was able uh, to uh, was able to train some of the new graduates in agriculture students right here in Mogadishu um, in, in, in Mogadishu universities. All right. Those are uh, some of the uh, uh, pictures and some of the meetings we had when we opened the institution in uh, when some fresh opened that uh, training institution for the new students in agriculture. All right, uh, the next slide please. All right, uh, some fresh uh, is, is, uh, organizes uh, into creating uh, associations with other farmers here uh, in the local area. Uh, it, it, it's in the process of establishing a Somali banana cooperation consistence of consistent of banana growth uh, into the association and it also plans to organize farmers into association with modern systems. Uh, in, in clubs that you know they can basically share uh, information and technical issues and training and et cetera like that. All right, uh, some of the stuff and that some fresh needs when it comes to um, uh, you know, uh, laboring stuff uh, working in the farm in, in the farm uh, it includes um, 
it includes basically a large scale of production um, for the fruits and vegetables in Somalia. Some of the stuff it requires uh, in our farm is like basically a heavy duty farm tractors for all the corpse and land preparation. Um, uh, another heavy duty of extractor for the kennel preparation, bots and rainwater reservoirs, uh, rotary ring for deep water wells for supplementing and sustainable water resources, uh, model fruits and vegetables process in the center and equipment, also uh, a tons of de delivery trucks for transfer uh, from transporting the farm. Uh, basically transporting uh, the farm from fruits and vegetables and distributing it into the local market. Uh, uh, irrigation system uh, for two, 200 hectares of banana plantations and model drip irrigation system for 120 hectares of cash crop vegetables. You can go to the next slide, please. Uh, some of the uh, future plans uh, for some fresh includes uh, 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 producing thallium of banana of the same um, of the <coughs> of the same age and disease free to the local market as well as regional and international market. Um, also, it plans to expand the gap technologies to farmers in the association in order uh, to boost the Somali banana quality of production for both the local and the international market. Uh, some of the challenges that we face as a company uh, include lack of adequate technical support, uh, including training, uh, shortest, shortness of uh, water resources, um, lack of adequate agricultural infrastructure, including uh, irrigation system and uh, information on farm inputs, disease and market, as well as uh, farm equipment, such as uh, tractors, trailers and trucks. Uh, we do have uh, uh, investment opportunities here at SunFresh and it's ready to expand to on its success uh, Some fresh is ready to expand uh, their products in local market, uh, technical know-how and expansion plan, low investment and prices tags, and um, as well as um, supporting a new uh, graduate um, agricultural students in here in Somalia. Uh, if you have any questions, you can post your questions. Uh, where it was told uh, to be posted. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Najma Jailani. Uh, you mentioned a lot of, uh, of machinery uh, produced by the companies who are attending this webinar. I mean, irrigation, tractors, uh, sprayers. Uh, uh, I'm seeing uh, among the participants uh, uh, 20, 30 Italian companies uh, in, in, this, in this field. So. I'm sure you will find uh, your, um, your right counterparts uh, at this purpose. So I'm, I'm also seeing some questions. Uh, we, can, we can reply to all the questions at the end of the presentation, so you can continue to, to publish your question and we will, uh, we will read uh, at the end. Now I'm glad to give the floor to uh, Jubalan Integrity and Agriculture Company uh, from, uh, from Kismayo. So, Mr. Mohamed Yusuf Ali, uh, we can we can publish your presentation. So uh, you have the floor, please. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, I'm glad to participate this meeting. Uh, I'm sorry I was late for I, I had another meeting today. I was late and I joined now. Uh, the other thing I am now representing in the Jubilee Inter Integrated Agriculture and Development Corporation. Uh, our task is uh, agro-industrial and development activities. Uh, the company was created, uh, established 
in March 2010, and it is a private uh, corporation. And we mainly operate in Somalia, uh, especially in uh, Jubalan, Kismayo. Our head of office is in Kismayo. Uh, the issue and the reason why the company was created is when we see when we saw the the need of the uh, of the communities in Somalia is when we decided to uh, create this uh, company and our cooperation was funded by a member of a Somali professionals and agro uh, corporations in the community and the establishment was was based by the need of the of the country's agro rehabilitation uh, requirements. We operate at, as a agricultural development corporation and boost the knowledge of the farmers through practical training, importing helpful and tool, uh, tools and methods from all over the world. When we saw uh, the the education or the need of the community in the in the in, in this area is more and uh, lower than the need of the community is we bring education educated people from all over the world that can train or can boost the education uh, that the community needed the mission the mission of the uh, of the our cooperation is to train or educate uh, local farmers on pest farming uh, procedures while considering the climate change in the area. As, as we know that the climate of Somalia and the climate of the other countries are different. So when growing uh, crops, we must consider the climate and the area, the soil, everything. So we bring professional people from all over the world that, that can uh, understand the need of the of the of the community okay the other issue that we do for the uh, farmers is to participate in the rehabilitation process construction of all agricultural en enhancements training of the local farmers through the use of pesticides the pesticide we use it needs an education when farmers when farmers when farmers use pesticides, they need to have to know the the advantage and this disadvantage of the of the pesticides and why pesticides is used. If the farmer doesn't know why pesticide is used and when pesticide is used and what the disadvantage of the pesticides, it will destroy the crops. So we decided to start everything from the grassroots to teach the farmers how these pesticides can be uh, helpful sometimes and how uh, the pesticides can be uh, uh, harmful sometimes and sometimes helpful. So we train the, uh, the farmers from the grassroots level. We, we, we created methods that they can understand easily. And we uh, brought some best sides that we can use easily. Uh, and we train them. We go to the farms, we train the, we, do, we have done a nursery in, in the farms that they can come and take a training of all farmers, take everything and go and uh, do a practical in their farms. We also uh, do a, a on job training. When the, when the farmer is doing his work, we also go, go to the farms and teach them on job training while they are doing. The other thing is road construction and building of water, uh, of uh, shallow wells in the farms. You know, in most of the areas, the water is, uh, the clean water is scarce. So we drill shallow wells and some, uh, some areas we constructed produce to make easy, a farmer to make easy and 
facilitate the product they get from the farm to to the to the market. So, if if the farm is uh, is inaccessible to the uh, to the market, uh, the product of the farm will be useless. So, we construct a, a road between the market and the farmers. What, the other thing is irrigation. In Somalia, as you know, that uh, was a civil war uh, sometimes, and all irrigation system uh, uh, gone out. So we created a canal, irrigation canal that can support a group of farmers while using solar power system to reduce the energy power they need. Most of the farmers is uh, uh, low income farm uh, communities. So we created solar system that can reduce the energy power they need, the cost they pay for the irrigation system. And the other thing is most of the farms in our area, people are using all, all, all system. Uh, we started training them to use a, a model system to get the the quality of uh, of the of the uh, of the best sites they need, the equipment they they need. Some some of them use an old equipment, but we we at, we train them to get this system. So the irrigation system, we need to improve them. We improved, but we need a lot to, uh, to do a lot to, uh, to improve. We need uh, tractors that can work at different ways, harvesting, pluving, uh, tractors that can and do a lot in, in, in this area. So we have the land, the fertile land that can produce a lot, but the education and, and the equipment are still very rare. And the other issue that uh, is mostly ma must be said is the security. Security is, is not 100%. The security, the irrigation system to be developed and the, the equipment to be used is, is mostly necessary. So thank you very much. That's all what I have to say. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mohamed. You mentioned a lot of issues. Even in your case, uh, in Italy, we have all the equipment uh, uh, you mentioned in your presentation. So irrigation system, obviously, I'm seeing among the, I'm seeing, uh, among the participants a lot of Italian companies involved also in the irrigation sector. So uh, we can we can deepen also this uh, this topic. So let me give the floor now to uh, Mr. Abukar Barre from Irshabel Multipurpose Farm Company uh, from Bela Duane in the in the central Somalia. Uh, so Abukar, uh, you have the floor. Could you please switch on the webcam and uh, and then you can you can speak. Thank you. Mr. Abukar, can you hear us? Okay, I think we have some internet problem, some connection problem. So uh, let's go. Let's go to the next speaker, the next company. So, uh, Mr. Um, Abdullahi Omar Abukar from Som Green. Please, you have the floor. Hello. Hello, hello, please go ahead. Okay. I think everyone is good. Uh, I'm on the line uh, from some green. I think you are hearing me. 
Yes, yes, we can hear you, please. Okay, okay, thank you all. Uh, my name is Abdullahi from Sun Green Company. Uh, I would like to uh, present here uh, some about our company. Uh, here I would like to present the background uh, of Sun Green Company. Sun Green Company is an organization dealing with uh, small scale farmers and middle farmers uh, in Bradir, Middle Shale, the state government, Shale, uh, Somali member of the Federal Republic. It has uh, established late uh, 2017 and early 2018. Uh, so, Sun Green Company has clients and customers in the more this estimated 33. Okay, in different uh, district, mainly Mogadishu, uh, Johar, Mogadai, and Balan. Okay, these villages. Uh, Organize the farmer cooperatives. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, for handling uh, the people in the village needed needs. Uh, some green company facilitates a uh, village cooperative having uh, a be a member uh, managing the cooperative, also treating rules and regulation written by the board of the cooperative approved and valid. The assembly of the cooperative in Kora. One third of the Congress members. Each cooperative based on the village has at least 50 farmer families. Every family consists of uh, members, that is to say, the family be, uh, be 11 uh, members, 550 people each cooperative. The table below shows the figure. Okay, go ahead. Okay, here is the bigger uh, number of the cooperatives, uh, cooperatives uh, 32, uh, number of the families, number of the individuals, total members. Okay, here I can estimate the land belongs to these members of each, uh, based, uh, based on having one hectare average for the sum of the hectare will be uh, 18,150, uh, but cannot be calculated as calculated because the family members are not all adults. So the figure below explains the status of the land. Okay, go ahead. Okay, here are the figures, a number of the cooperative, a number of the families, number of the individuals and total members. Okay, here after I can see the land of our company. So uh, some clean, uh, some uh, green, a company, client cooperative as the next stage. Relating the situation of the field farmers belonging to the associations of the farmer, relying on the agricultural fields, though our client cooperative does not rely on the farm cultivating. There are other active uh, activities that they are dreaming. The future such as poultry, beekeeping farmers, women handicrafters, uh, Okay, and the features uh, and the water fishing and the small business relating to weak impacty projects. Okay, go ahead. Okay, and here is the another feature is uh, okay, challenges facing the cooperative is last season is a uh, uh, lack of water and floods. Okay, also a uh, low yield and poor quality, a uh, short skill promotion. Lack of infrastructure and improvement, bad market, input scarcity. Uh -huh. uh, death of investment is shortage uh, about the water, uh, absent of education care for children, which is school aid, uh, poor sanitation and hygiene, and also absence of the farmers encouraging the organizations and returning the IDBs. Okay, uh, finding this uh, solution, expected problem mentioned on above. Uh, problem depending on each other in the families and the cooperatives and villages level, then the solution can be among them. Idea, force, uh, capital gathering on the ground, uh, on ground uh, professional training, initiative organizing for the capacity development and skills promotion for the farmers. Also awareness and the mobilization for the communities how they avoid disease and waterborne illness, uh, easy transferable fevers, 
Uh, also, available irrigation system depends on the solar in correct structure and rehabilitation. Okay, also uh, availability farm inputs and uh, qualified uh, cities and acceptable uh, chemical, uh, like this one is also uh, providing farm in, for, uh, um, instrument and machinery, created over an organization and take a great role in the gathering. Uh, uh, see also uh, organizing the tiny projects to integrate uh, the previous life, bull market accessibility uh, in the best solution, providing wash and education service. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Okay, here is the conclusion. I, I would like to close uh, my presentation with any of those organizations interesting uh, to support the poor farmers may allow to explain the needs by participating on the decision making. This kit is very welcome in my site. Thank you. Uh, I'm Abdullah Ibuman from Somri. Mr. Abdullah, thank you. Very interesting also your reality, your reality in, um, in Mogadishu. So uh, we, are, uh, we are now waiting for Mr. Uh, Abukar because he has some internet problem. In the meantime, we can, uh, we can start to reply to some questions. Uh, we have one question from uh, Marco Cicoria. Uh, so uh, Mr. Scarcio mentioned one transfer as one of the topic of involvement of UNIDO. Can we have more details on this type of project, the role of UNIDO, or any examples? Uh, so, Igor, would you like to reply to this question? Yeah, maybe I will give a little bit of introduction, then I'll uh, pass it to you, Francesco. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, it's a great part of the work that facilitated through the office of the ITPO in Rome. But uh, basically, uh, what the project is about, the project in Somalia is about supporting the needs of the uh, technical technology and business needs of the Somali private sector. Uh, we work across value chain. So we work, we touch upon the agricultural value chain, of course. This meeting is one of those activity that fits in this purpose. But we work also in the fishery sector, livestock, but any new emerging economic sector that uh, um, Somalia is looking at from digital digitalization to uh, telecommunication and energy, depending on uh, um, and the uh, needs that we find in the market. Of course, uh, those new sectors in, in the area of diversification are relatively new. So uh, the opportunities are uh, still uh, to be uh, further developed and uh, assessed. In the part of technology know-how, um, what we do here is very simple. We receive the request. We basically know the needs and the requests coming from the private sector in Somalia and trying to match with the specific solution that can be identified uh, on the um, international market that express interest in doing business in Somalia. Um, there are solutions that, for example, we had in case of a project that we're looking at the containerized solution for technology provision. At the same time, it's just about skills training or uh, expertise in the process of uh, operating those uh, uh, containerized production solutions or a technology associated whereby technology plus know-how was transferred eventually to a specific enterprise. Uh, then Francesco, maybe you will take it from here. But uh, the point, the main point is to be said that uh, um, it's very, we are not subsidizing those interventions as you need to. I want to be very clear on that. We are facilitating the interaction between um, the uh, Somali company and the foreign company interested in this type of solutions. Then, of course, there are specific ad hoc cases that uh, we sometimes have to uh, get in ourselves involved to for specific requests coming from the government of Somalia uh, on addressing specific, specific sector needs. Then that become a project implemented by UNIDO or eventually by other colleagues in the uh, UN family, FAO, for example, I'm sure that some of you might have been involved in project with FAO or WFP or others that uh, are involved in specific value chain related project interventions. And there will be a traditional procurement exercise whereby um, 
the publication of terms of reference is published on the related agency uh, web portals and uh, it's open for international competition by, by the best uh, bidder to, to apply. Um, that is a traditional procurement uh, or gara d'appalto typical of uh, uh, the UN system. But uh, maybe uh, Francesco, if you want to add something. Yeah, thank you, Igor. You covered uh, um, almost all the, all the aspects. Uh, obviously, we will follow the creation of partnerships, even in this case. That's why we organized this event, which is a practical event. It's not a classic webinar. So we invited private companies just to, to, give, uh, to give a practical follow-up to, to, uh, to this initiative. So um, we will, we'll like in this way, I will call you, all of you, all the participants, in the in the days to come uh, tomorrow Wednesday and so on, just to understand your uh, which is your perception of Somalia uh, business environment and what you are expecting from uh, uh, from companies uh, in Somalia and then uh, what you can offer these companies because uh, they presented all the all their needs in terms of technology but uh, uh, our goal is to match with the with the Somali Somali needs. In terms of know-how, obviously uh, we found also the, the transfer of know-how uh, through experts. Uh, I spoke with Mr. Marco Cicoria, I think um, one week ago. So uh, I, I know very well what he's, uh, he's looking for. He's looking for a partner in uh, Somalia. And then we can, uh, we can discuss with the team uh, how, how we can help him in finding uh, a partner to produce manufacture agriculture machinery directly in, uh, in Somalia. So uh, that's actually a good point, Francesco. Uh, let me add on this point. Um, it often time happen that uh, we respond also to, uh, to our priorities supporting the Somali private sector. However, because of the setup that we created, a little bit of the unique setup that we created with this project, we're also open to promote uh, interesting solutions that we feel um, would meet the, condi the market condition of Somalia of uh, uh, in foreign private sector interested to do business in the country. Of course, uh, uh, we are very, this is not our priority engagement, but uh, we make it a priority in the moment we see a project that uh, uh, we have heard that have had some success in the country or we witness by our experience having had success in similar contexts. And we believe that could be um, a way to benefit the overall economic development in the country or specific sectorial development uh, that we're talking about. So definitely we are also open to the reverse engagement. We don't want to substitute ourselves to a Nietzsche type of office, but uh, um, the point is that uh, oftentimes there is an interesting technology that we feel like needs to be introduced specifically if uh, touch upon issue of environmental sustainability or environmental impact and resolving a specific problem that we have identified in the value chain, then definitely would be our, is our duty also to advocate for that specific solution and promote it as much as we can. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. sure. Yeah, sure, sure, you are right. So uh, now I, I see uh, Abukar Barre, he, he, came, uh, he came online. So let's try to, to listen his presentation uh, from Il Chabel Multipurpose Company. Uh, you have the floor, please. Yes, thank you. Welcome to everyone. Uh, sorry for internet connective issue. I was in trouble. No problem. No, go ahead. To... Let's try. Let's try. Yeah, now I want to share a screen for the presentation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. As you see there, yeah, yeah we are seeing the okay, uh, the screen. Yeah. We are sharing the presentation, Abukar. Yeah. So, uh, uh, okay, would you like to, to do yeah, yeah. from yourself? Okay, please, please. Yes, yeah, it's a very multi purpose farmers cooperative. Ishabel is the Kulegweni Hiram region, Somalia. We, can, we cannot we can see your screen. Yeah. Okay, now 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 we can see we can see it, please. 
Yes, I, I, I could hear you. Yeah, greeting to all participants, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. Yeah. Can, can you? Hear me? Yes, you, we can hear you. If you can uh, uh, start with the presentation uh, modality. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yes, for screen. 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 Yes, for Yeah. Was his show a multiple was from a subject if was found everything you see there. But I will try to. Yeah, yes. Hello. Hello, Abukar. Can I can I please uh, um, ask you to to stop the the screen sharing, uh, as we can uh, we can publish the presentation uh, here from from our office, so uh, we can help you in uh, we can help you in uh, in presenting. Okay, please go ahead. This is the presentation. It's it's enough to you 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 tell us uh, uh, next slide and we go we go ahead with the presentation. Hello. I think we have some problem, some internet connection problem. So, uh, Abukar, can you hear us? Just because I'm suggesting maybe we uh, hold this presentation, maybe we can share with the participant and- uh, Yeah, yeah, uh, we, we can share the later, we can share it. It's a pity because, because, time. because uh, Abukar connected, uh, connected just yeah, now. In the field uh, in Somalia has been a little bit in uh, yeah. having difficulty in connecting over the, particularly over the past couple of weeks, uh, but by Doha is offline and uh, the Chavele has been particularly challenging over the past two weeks. Has been uh, all the year has been alright, but uh, with the COVID and the, all the online meetings. But the past two weeks has been particularly difficult. Uh, yeah, yeah. The internet cable to Baidoa were cut, uh, and the uh, but there are some really big challenges. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it's a pity because uh, it tried several times to connect. Now yeah. he successful to connect, but uh, obviously we can we can share his presentation with the with the, all the all the companies, all the Italian companies. No problem. Okay, we have other questions. Uh, Nino Claudio Algeri, on a, on a general basis, is logistics a new challenge like it's now becoming in Sudan and Ethiopia? The pandemic has unfortunately determined a deteriorating in the services of transport and a huge increase in the international freight rates. Uh, yes, um, yeah, logistics is a, is a huge challenge, obviously. Um, I, as, a, as, a, as, a, as far as I know, a lot of companies. Uh, Use the uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, as a logistic base to um, to deal with uh, the, the Horn of Africa. So to deal with also Eritrea, Djibouti, and Somalia. So I think uh, this could be this could be uh, a real solution for the logistic uh, logistic uh, challenges. I don't know if Igor, you would like to add anything on on this topic. I would like to maybe ask a clarification, if you can be typed by Dr. Algeri. If, uh, what do you mean by logistic base? But as a, as an office for operating then in the, the region, or uh, as a um, let's say cargo logistic base itself. Uh, and if it's a cargo, for what exactly? For importing equipment or uh, raw material into the country or for exporting out of Somalia. Uh, that probably just to clarify, because just to give a little bit of some context, uh, many companies, as Francesco mentioned, from a logistical standpoint, in terms of operation, having an office, having personnel also based, uh, uh, oftentimes, correct, they're using Addis or Nairobi as well as, um, as an office, uh, depending one of the two usually is uh, the best is, is okay and there are also growing presence to enter to the market of somalia um, through djibouti or area in the country of somalia in somalia that uh, are not mogadish but for example it can be puntaland or somaliland as a, a entry point into the country particularly for foreigners that would like to have 
a more secure base to operate, it, let's be facing uh, that is oftentimes uh, um, an option for foreign private sector to take into consideration. Um, and uh, uh, oftentimes have been actually a very good entry point, particularly from Garoe or Borsasso in Puntaland or Argeza in Somaliland to uh, then have an expansion into the entire market in the country. Regarding instead uh, uh, logistics in terms of cargo, it depends very much on if you if for importing. Um, I mean, I doubt that there is a need of uh, having a logistical base. Probably importing can directly be done through through Italy or to, to Europe uh, or any other locations that uh, where the, the equipment are produced to ship into the country. Uh, Somalia trade uh, interactions are quite uh, have been quite structured and moving forward even during the COVID pandemic. Of course, in the uh, context of the global uh, contraction of the problem that trade has been having, actually not more than contraction of problems that trade has been having, um, Somalia, more or less, uh, beside two or three months, if I'm not mistaken, at the beginning of the pandemic, when there was a complete lockdown, also trade routes, uh, then everything has been reopened again. And uh, some backlog, of course, but the operation has been at the port, of, in the port has continued. For exporting out of the country, as well, it depends very much on uh, the product. But uh, again, uh, in terms of cargo, ship cargo, uh, Somalia ports can provide support. Uh, I believe that the Porto Bossasso, Porto Mogadishu, and Kisimayo are the main one to take into consideration. And of course, uh, Berbera also in Somaliland. Um, in terms of airport, the airport of Bossasso and Mogadishu, and partially also Kisimayo, are equipped for uh, cargo support, cargo, car cargo planes and they are operating nationally and internationally with daily flights. Um, uh, more or less, uh, at least daily flights are happening from Mogadishu for sure, and Argeza and um, Berbera. And I believe also um, Bossasso and uh, Garoe in Pontalanda are also operating international cargo flight every day. Uh, Mogadishu also has Ethiopian airline with offer cargo, as well as uh, Garoe, I think, offer cargo support. Mm -hmm. That is actually taken into consideration. All this information can be verified eventually, or if more information are required, we can facilitate the identification of the related information. There are a lot of international shipping companies then that can oftentimes facilitate the, the uh, transfer of uh, cargo in and out of the country. Regarding then for cargo purposes, the uh, element of financing, so letter of credit and so on, um, that there is some kind of facilitation that can be offered by the Somali bank in that direction. Of course, uh, um, in for more information needs to be verified case by case. And uh, uh, the team of UNIDO can facilitate also that with the EDUs that uh, are in contact with the enterprises can eventually facilitate the identification of the right facilitators in the private, in the, in the banks or um, in, in the country that can help in that direction as well, given that uh, oftentimes become a critical point of uh, um, striking the deal, uh, whether we're talking about trade relationship or simply equipment transfer. Um, to be noted that the Somali financial system is uh, uh, does not have direct banking correspondence with the European or American banks. They go through third-party banks, uh, in, sorry, bank in third third-party countries. So, for example, a Somali bank may have a bank account of a of their branch in Egypt, Ethiopia, Kenya, Turkey, or Emirati from which then they uh, operate and engage directly with the European or North American uh, bank correspondent. So it's a matter of uh, recognition of the Somali banking system internationally. The only way to do so is through um, third party bank. It's a system that uh, is quite well established. Um, we use it uh, even as UN, UN agencies to do our payment to our staff, for example, or uh, our, the vendors that we have in the country for our service provision. Uh, so it's totally uh, is a, is a, a way around a private limitation of uh, banks to engage directly um, 
between uh, Europe and Somalia or North America and Somalia. It's the geopolitics of the banking system, unfortunately, and that's how we are operating right now. If the, an American bank tomorrow will start engaging with, with a Somali bank, then everybody will follow suit. But at the, at the moment, this is the situation. Yes, thank you, Igor. We have some uh, an intervention from Mr. Apolloni. It's uh, specifically with re reference to bananas, but uh, mm, I don't. Maybe I don't like uh, so, provide, uh, Yes, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't find the question, so uh, we can go ahead. We have uh, one question from Mr. Ariane Chaifier. I don't know if he's uh, representing an Italian company uh, or what. Uh, how we seen the dealership concept in Somalia? And if not dealership, uh, which is now the most common mean that Somali's operators use to cooperate with uh, European companies? I think uh, my, my colleagues in the field can reply to this, uh, to this, uh, to this question. You, just also, you can provide some uh, answer also from some experience that we've been having with some partners already of uh, the training, the introduction that we are introducing with some specific some partners, and then mm. maybe also from the field. Uh, um, yes, from Nardi, Nardi company. Ariane Chefe is Nardi, okay. So Najib, would you like to reply? Um, yeah, so um, I think if I understand the question correctly is having mainly, uh, is a dealership in Somalia, right? Yeah. Um, if I give an example to your dealership in Somalia, the airport, which now um, they sell cars, to, to different clients. So um, on the concept of dealership, yes, it exists in Somalia. And, and, and I know actually personally, a lot of companies who are interested to, 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 to also facilitate that, yeah, whether it's a direct dealership that coming to and has and having a presence in Somalia or uh, some sort of a joint uh, venture. It also depends on the products. So um, yeah, if it's let's say like fertilizers or tractors, that is something that um, that also UNIDO can kind of also support in facilitating the strategy and also um, um, the knowledge on the market. And I think this is something also that that can work. So at the moment, Somalia um, is, is is actually coming back to international stage, and a lot of things are changing. So um, also, as I mentioned previously in my comment, is that early involvement and early presence in Somalia would definitely give you. Um, the advantage later on. So um, yeah, and this is something um, that also we can further look into and, and also come back later on with more specific um, information. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe also let me add on that point uh, um, that you just mentioned. Uh, that's very much correct. Uh, we would like to highlight one, put in context uh, something about the country. It's a country that until a few years ago, probably until very recent, uh, even two or three years ago, the only attention was around humanitarian development, um, meaning uh, in and out uh, of the grant support from the international community. Now there is a private sector that despite all challenges uh, um, is trying to um, position themselves and doing the job that the private sector has to do, try to trigger some domestic investment, identify a local market, start selling locally, possibly internationally if they can, improve the quality of the production, improve the market access, upgrading the technology, and ultimately creating jobs and economic opportunities in general. This is the, the premises. Uh, in a way, moving away from the kind of aid dependency that the country has been subject for very long, probably. So um, example, I'm talking about that in example of dealership because uh, this is something that uh, uh, definitely Somali are interested. Uh, however, the, uh, something that I recommend is also uh, be open to middle ground solution of uh, maybe not dealership uh, right away, but uh, also solution that can introduce the concept of a product, uh, maybe um, with uh, a multi dealership partner that uh, engage and have and carry different items of different brands and uh, and then uh, uh, use that and, and start investing in that partnership in a way or the other 
um, Najib, for example, mentioned car dealership. There are, for example, very, if, if I'm not mistaken, there is only Toyota that has a dealership in the country. And Nissan that tried to have a dealership in, through Somaliland, uh, it didn't work very well. Um, in terms of uh, agro mechanization, there is no dealership at the moment. Uh, for example, there is only some ad hoc uh, trade engagement. So whoever comes first and is able to position itself first in a way or the other will have an incredible competitive advantage compared to any other partner. Um, I know that uh, much more aggressive and risk adverse countries like Turkey, China have tried, but uh, the reason why they didn't work is not because the market is difficult, it's because there is a little bit of uh, uh, um, market opinion in the country, if you want to put it that way, of knowledge that they know that even though the price may be low, the quality is not as good. And Somali society and those that are able to do investment uh, in this kind of technology are aware of what often time of what brand to look for and they're willing to probably pay a little bit more for the quality um, not to discriminate the quality of uh, countries like China and Turkey because sometimes there are also quality products coming from those countries but uh, maybe the reputation sometimes uh, is a, a challenge that uh, is looking at uh, especially when you're talking about uh, uh, agro-industrial machine uh, so definitely uh, companies from uh, uh, Europe, uh, Italy in particular, particularly Italy for the historical relationship that the country have had, um, may have a, uh, an advantage in doing business in the country. Whether or not it's a, a dealership or just a, a simple uh, trader engagement or some kind of business engagement with, uh, with the local partners. Yeah, thank you, Igor. Thank you. So, I don't see other Francesco, questions. Can I just... Yes, please, can please, I just... please. Also, to compliment what Igor has said, is, um, <clears throat> you know, Somalis often what happens is that people, um, there is also um, um, the capability of traveling is not, it's not that well in Somalia. So, I'm um, traveling to other countries, Italy, getting visa or any other country, it's a bit difficult. So, also, the concept of, of having a dealership in Somalia could could work because of that reason. Having a tractor ready in Mogadishu that the person can come and see and, and buy immediately without having to go through the, the import and the regulations or even have to go into travel to another country to see the product. It's something that, that could work. And, 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 and yes, price-wise, I think uh, people are more of a um, kind of a prefer more um, to look into the price instead of the quality. And also there is the issue of guarantee, uh, whether it's one year or two years, people definitely don't look at that. And that is now changing definitely. And the course is now co going a little bit step uh, parallel where people are more also looking into quality nowadays instead of only the price, because through experience they see the cheaper the price that the product eventually will kind of uh, um, um, break so um, yeah so I think this is something also that later on that we can Francesco look into and kind of analyze and and, and see how uh, whoever is interested to have a dealership in Somalia how that can be supported based on the local knowledge I say local knowledge um, because that is really important and that is why Igor was also mentioning that a lot of um, efforts have been done in the past and which which failed is because of the the, the lack of knowledge on, on the ground uh, and, and the difference uh, uh, that you will have later on in advantage is basically, um, are you able to gain more information on the ground and can you adapt to that information? Uh, yeah, that's ego, That's from my side, uh, Francesco, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Najib. Um, okay, the dealership, the dealership model is still, of course, the preferred one by many companies. Uh, uh, Mr. Nino Claudio Algeri added uh, now in the, in the chat. Okay, yes, you... You are, you are right. So I don't see uh, I don't see other um, other questions. So I think we can close uh, um, we can close this event. Uh, obviously, uh, I I will call all of you in the in the days to come to to better understand your 
your needs and your uh, your willingness to to cooperate with the summary companies and then we organize uh, we can organize uh, uh, some uh, uh, b2b meeting private b2b meetings with the uh, summary companies mostly interesting for you i leave you in the chat uh, my uh, my mail address uh, to uh, to all of you which is f dot pallocca at unido uh, dot org as you can write me you can write me starting from this afternoon uh, requesting uh, requesting for in-depth but also uh, for private b2b meetings with the Somali companies who presented this morning all the presentation will be uh, will be published on our website unido.it and also the the webinar can be seen in the uh, youtube channel of unido itpo italy and also in our website so uh, we will keep in touch uh, i remain at your disposal for any in-depth on this topic i don't know if igor fabio or the other speakers would like to add anything francesco no? just a few yes, words please. may i well uh, thank you very much again for uh, giving us this opportunity with a new country like Somalia. Uh, Federuna Coma is looking uh, uh, to Africa um, in deep because, uh, as I said before, this continent uh, is an opportunity for our uh, industry um, because uh, many of uh, uh, African countries rely on agriculture for in terms of the GDP contribution. Uh, so far, we really hear from uh, our Somali friends, counterparts, in order to find out and discuss with them the most appropriate technologies, solutions to improve the level of uh, agriculture mechanization in farming. Thanks again. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you very much. Uh, a very, very last question from Miss uh, Annika Patrignani, Habitat World. Uh, we would like to develop organic farming with a training school in Florence in partnership with us. Okay, um, I, I, I will call you tomorrow uh, to deepen also this issue. And uh, so thank you very much. Thank you very much um, to take part in this, uh, in this interesting webinar. So let's keep in touch and then uh, we, will, uh, we will give you a follow up during the forthcoming days. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you again. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.